Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicUWBugs.com and in this video I want to talk to you about the five reasons why you can still use a Volkswagen Beetle as a daily drive. Yes, I'm talking about the air-cooled Volkswagen Beetle as a daily drive, so something and then from the 1970s and back all the way earlier from the 60s, 50s even if you want to, you can still use them as a daily drive. And uh, I'm going to give you the five reasons why you can still do it and uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, we live in a world today where it's high tech. Our cars today have a lot of creature comforts. I think there's a, too much, to be honest. I think it's getting to the point where our dashboards are so cluttered with options and things and, and gadgetry and, and things to hook up or whatever. And uh, I think sometimes you feel like you want to just go back to basics. I love that one dial in the dash with that little gas gauge to the right. Or if you have just the gas gauge in the actual Speedo itself on the later Beetles, it's all compact, it's simple, you can't get confused, and uh, you really can't get lost. So, in the whole uh, tech dash. Number one, dependability. Heck yeah. These cars, you can still get in, drive them, turn the key, boom, they start right up. And yeah, they're dependable. They, can, they just get to get you from point A to point B. You know, it always helps today too though, you know, to be, if you're going to use a Beetle as a daily drive, it, it does help to be somewhat handy, right? Uh, you know, if being able to tinker, being able to pick up a wrench, a screwdriver and, and fix these things, that's what they were designed to be, you know, they were designed to be fixed from the home uh, with your home tools. And in most of today's cars, you can't do that, right? You have to take it to a dealer or you have to take it to a specialized mechanic to work on these things and the costs are astronomical these days so you still have you know somewhat you know a beetle is still very dependable to drive if you tune it up right you got to understand too though you still have to maintain it there's little you know the maintenance uh, scheduling is going to be a lot shorter than say a later car today's cars you can go 15,000 miles on some of them or more on an oil change a beetle no it's going to be traditional 3,000 miles so Things like that you're going to have to look out for. Yes, it's still, it's, it is an old car, so, you know, things are going to, you know, pop up. But you've got to expect that. And if you, if you understand that and you're good with your hands, or even if you want to learn, holy cow, there's so much on the Internet you can learn. Uh, you just got to be a little adventurous and say, you know what, I'm going to go back in time. I'm going to use this as a daily drive. Uh, they are dependable for sure. Uh, and you know what, if you're in a snowy state, northeast like I am, <laughs> Remarkably, the Beetle is excellent in the snow. So you get some good, uh, good snow tires for a Volkswagen Beetle and you have no problem. Number two, they're still very reasonable. You can pick up a used, a very good daily drive uh, Beetle these days, say a 68 and later Beetle. Uh, and I do recommend going with a 12 volt system if you're gonna go with a daily drive Beetle. So keep that in mind. So even if you go with an earlier bug, um, I would say, Go with a 12 volt system. It's, it's going to base. It's definitely going to give you a little bit of a leg up. Uh, six volt systems, you know, they reliable, but they're kind of not reliable. Those batteries are not often bought these days, and you know, you go a spurt without driving the car. Sometimes the battery comes out dead. So a 12 volt system would be better. Your lights are better, blinkers, headlights, things like that. So uh, you know, you can pick up a 68 Beetle, a 70 Beetle, still under 10 grand, like 7,500 bucks maybe six grand, maybe eight grand, whatever. And that's probably a good get in and, co and go car. Uh, so they're still very reasonable as a used car. And what's great about it, they still go up in value, right? As opposed to buying any traditional used car today is gonna continue to go down. So why not, right? Number three, parts and accessories. Every part in the world is almost available for these bugs. And I think it's more available today than probably and within the last 10, 15, 20 years. When I first started my business, or when I first started the hobby, say, uh, I got my first Beetle in the summer of 99, it was a Super Beetle, and back then, the internet was still very much in its infancy. Um, I don't even know if I had a computer in my house just yet, uh, and I was, still, uh, I was still going through catalogs and, and J.C. Whitney pamphlets that I would get in the mail to source parts and getting on the phone and talking to an agent you know, uh, eBay really wasn't around, as, you know, or, you know, really getting the wheels in motion for collectible stuff. And it was just very early on. Now, today, holy cow, it's everywhere. 
and the shops are all over the place on the internet. There's plenty of places in California. You got Facebook, you got Craigslist, you got eBay. These parts are, I mean, r the most rare parts are now popping up that you never thought you'd ever find again. So uh, it's, it's very reliable uh, today to find parts and accessories, and they're still pretty inexpensive. Um, just understand they are aftermarket, so of course they're not going to hold up maybe as long as a German counterpart part, but if you could find an NOS box that's unopened and never used, and there's plenty of guys out there selling those kind of parts because they've, they've been hoarding this stuff for years, uh, it's out there. Thank God for the internet because it's there. Number four, they're updatable. You can modernize these cars, right? So you can get, like I had a video, if you have an earlier Beetle and you want to update your car to disc brakes, you want to put a dual master cylinder in the car. Um, I mean, we just got a Carmen Ghia in behind us. It's got a rotary engine in it. Uh, it's amazing. It's a Mazda rotary engine that's in this Ghia behind me. Just pretty amazing. This, the, the customization of the Beetle is probably, I don't know, maybe it's the most customized classic car, I think, out there. Um, and a lot of the stuff is bolt-on. There's really not much modification or cutting that you would need to do to get it up to speed. So I do love putting an, a 1600 motor, uh, putting a big bore uh, piston and cylinder kit on the motor, 1641. That's pretty much where I'll go. I don't need to do dual carbs. I don't need to go any higher than that or any other major modification on the block. I don't like to machine anything. I like to just keep it stock. A 1641 you know, single port motor I have in my 1970 convertible right now, and that thing cruises without a problem. Um, you know, uh, you can do 60, 65, 70, 80 miles an hour on the highway with that thing without a, without a problem at all, and run all day like that. Uh, so you want to put disc brakes on? No problem. The kits are out there. Um, you want to put LED lights on these cars? No problem. The kits are out there. You just got to do a little bit of searching, that's all. Um, it's definitely out there, so that's what's really nice about the Volkswagen too, is it's upgradable to keep up with, you know, sort of the trends of what's going on today. If you want some creature comforts, I even remember, uh, I don't know if they're still doing it, but uh, Mid-America Motor Works, they were making pads to go under your seat if you wanted heated seats. So if you wanted to click a switch and, and you know, be somewhat modern and have heated seats in your car, you could do that, uh, which I thought was pretty cool too. So. Uh, going 12 volt again is is great thing to do because if you do have an iPhone or you want to plug in a charger or something, at least you have 12 volt charging capabilities in uh, you know in a bug if it has a cigarette lighter uh, function. So, but uh, yeah, they're definitely updatable and you can kind of modernize them. Number five, they are simple and pretty much for the most part easy to repair. Um, so if like I said, if, if you're handy from the get from the get go from the start uh, to get a beetle, uh, this is going to help you go a long way. And if you want to learn how to tinker with these cars and and know how to fix them, there's so many how tos online. Even my channel alone, I have over 500 how to videos on my channel on how to restore, repair, um, you know, kind of and and just fix and fix your beetle and and learn how to do tricks and and things to 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 make things work sometimes you have to improvise and there's we have there's so many tips and tricks out there uh, to show you how to do that um, there's many channels so um, that's the great thing about the Beetle they're easy to repair there's a lot of how to's there's a, and there's a huge following there's still a huge club and a cult out there really um, to to show you how to do all these things and what's really nice is that I just read an article before the year ended that um, youth, young kids are very interested in the vintage Beetle. Uh, and that's a great sign that this car is going to constantly live on and constantly be repaired and brought back to life and driven on the road. So I think it's a wonderful thing. Now I have some bonus, bonus things here. I know there's more than five, but you know what? I'm going to throw out a few bonus there for you. And I think I, I touched on this uh, earlier, and that is resale value. So when you buy these cars as a used Beetle and you want to use it as a daily drive um, and then turn around and sell it and maybe get something else down the line, the resale value on these things is great. They're only going up in value, not down. I mean, you can't put money in the bank and have it appreciate. Uh, as fast as, as a Beetle or, or a class, some classic cars. So a Beetle is just they're constantly going up. I pretty much say on an average, I feel that they go up between 10, 15, sometimes 20% every year, depending on which year, make, model. 
Uh, so they're only going up. You can't even get that in the bank. What do you get in the bank? If, you know, a couple percent, whatever, uh, if that. Um, so it's well, it's money in the bank. You have a vehicle. You got to look at it as you have a car. You have something, you have money basically stored there. So if you're ever in a tight situation and you have to sell the vehicle, good chance it's gonna sell, you know, if you market it right. So, uh, and then the other bonus is that it's low tech. Again, I'm going back to that. Sometimes it is really refreshing to have a low tech uh, vehicle. I mean, yes, I'm using tech to market myself and, and to get my business out there. If I didn't have the internet, I wouldn't have the business that I have today. Um, yes, the internet is a great thing, but sometimes you need to take a step back. Um, and when I go into modern cars today, my parents have a brand new Audi and I look at that dashboard and I'm like, I don't even know where to start half the time, you know, cause I look at the, the menu systems and it's just something else you have to learn. And it sometimes can be grueling. I know they're trying to simplify things. They're trying to give us more creature comforts and they're trying to give us more, I don't know, niceties they call it, or it's basically just conveniences. Oh, now you don't have to do this. Now you don't have to do that. Uh, and it's just getting to the point where it's like, man, you know, yeah, pretty soon you're not going to be able to drive. You're not going to drive anymore. The car's going to drive you to work. You're going to sit back. Yeah, you want to read the paper. Okay, then you don't have to bring the paper in the car. The paper will be on the screen in the car or on the windshield, right? That's going to happen. It's just uh, sometimes it's getting a little too intrusive to me, to my taste, which one thing that scared me, was that some of the new cars, and you guys can probably reflect on this if you don't have, have any better information, is that uh, insurance companies now are going to be putting gadgetry in your cars. I think they're already starting to do this, uh, where they're seeing how fast you're going, how, how hard you press the brakes, how often you press the brakes, how often you, you, you're going over the speed limit, how, how heavy your foot is on the pedal, how you turn, things like that, how you're operating the vehicle, so then they can gauge how they're going to then you know, uh, uh, charge you. So sooner or later, it's just going to be in your car. You're going to have a, a, you know, a GPS tracker or something, and it's going to track the speed of your vehicle. It's going to know what zone you're in. So if you're going over the speed limit, you're just going to get a ticket in the mail. So that's where we're going. Uh, and man, it's cool that if you think about it, if you go back to a Beetle and you drive that every day or use that as your daily drive, you're kind of getting off the grid if you think about it, right? Um, yeah, you can add your phone to add GPS to you know to your car, but you then you know you could always shut that off. And the Beetle, you're 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 back you're back in time. Whereas back to basics, you just got that little dial on the front of the dash. You got that little gas gauge there, and that's it, man. Uh, so pretty cool. Uh, anyways, guys, that's the five uh, top reasons why you can still have a Beetle as a daily drive. Uh, dependability, they're reasonable. Parts and accessories, they're updatable. Okay, they're simple to uh, uh, and easy to repair, and they got great bonuses like they're great for resale value and they're low tech. You go back in time; it's kind of refreshing. Might be scary to some of you youngsters out there that are so used to the tech today, but if you go sit in a Beetle, uh, just think about how it was back in the '60s. And you know what? People survived. You know, how do we do it before phones? How do we do it before tech? You know what? We we got by, right? So it is possible. All right, guys. That's that tip for today. Uh, I'm sorry if it's a little long-winded. If you got anything to add to this list, I'm all ears. Um, put it in the, in the uh, comment section below. We'd love to hear from you, and uh, I will see you next time. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, and uh, I do videos every week. So, all right, guys, take care.